I bet you would spend a pretty penny for an IV or a shot or a shot of green grass if I told you that it would keep you from getting sick this winter. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, but I have tried all of that and it didn't work. So I've been doing a lot of research and today we're gonna cover five things that you can do to support immune resilience. And then we're gonna discuss five immune related things in research you may have heard about because this is just the stuff that wakes me up inside. Now remember always, I am just a doctor on YouTube talking about things that fascinate me and I have a special interest in things that work for you and not against you. But just remember, I am not your doctor. This is educational only. I am not recommending in any way personal purchase or use of research chemicals. It's just that the science on them is fascinating. So let's cover some of the stuff that we can do really safely, then we'll get into the biohackery stuff. All right, what are things that you can do to bulletproof your immunity? Well, the first thing is you need to focus on getting deep sleep. But hear me out, because sleep is not just good for you, it's active immune system maintenance. You see, during deep sleep, two critical things happen. First, your body releases growth hormone when you sleep, which drives tissue repair and immune system recovery. If you miss sleep, you're basically hanging out with yesterday's inflammation, but also your brain cells shrink by about 40% when you sleep. And the space between them opens up to allow the glymphatic system, which is literally your brain's waste clearance system to get to work. It's kind of like flushing the toilet in your brain. Like if you don't get deep sleep, you're kind of living in an unflushed toilet brain. All right, the second thing that you can do to iron proof your immunity is fix any insulin resistance that you have. And I say this with a lot of heart because I'm not trying to judge or shame anybody about having insulin resistance or extra weight. I have met and worked with many people who have the problem with having put on a lot of body fat and then proceeding to eat all the right things and do all the right things and yet they can't pull it back off. That is insulin resistance in a nutshell. If you're somebody like that, it's probably because you've built up some sort of insulin resistance and your system just needs a total reset. And I say this because your immune system is actually highly sensitive to high blood sugar. Actually, high blood sugar can kind of get into your cells and cause your, your immune cells to be less flexible and able to get to an infection as quickly or as nimbly as they should be able to. It's kind of like just like you and I, like if we're not fit, then we can't run and jump over a fence or squeeze under a fence to get to somewhere in an emergency. Well, the same thing goes for your immune cells. If there's a lot of high blood sugar in your system, they tend to get kind of stiff and worn out and slow basically. And get this, high blood sugar chronically activates something called NF kappa B, your immune system's master inflammatory switch. All that goes to say unstable blood sugar basically keeps the immune system stuck in low grade inflammation. And so if you do something like a metabolic reset, like a whole 30 diet, or you start intermittent fasting, those are ways to support lowering insulin resistance, getting your mitochondria to wake up and run cleaner and better, and your immune system will actually follow. And the third thing is exercise. And I know I keep recycling sleep, diet, and exercise and, and basically repurposing them for different things. Who'd have thought these were so good for you? But I'm just gonna make this point on exercise and immunity. You make a waste product in your body called lymph. It's a fluid that drains out of your tissues and essentially carries cellular debris throughout your lymph nodes, the bumpy things that live here and in your groin and your armpit, you have them all over your body. But this system actually has no pump like your cardiovascular system does. If you think about blood, it gets pumped through the body because the heart is moving it along, but lymph has no pump like that. So you actually have to physically contract your muscles in order to get lymph to travel throughout the body. And that's actually how we're able to clear cellular waste out of our system. So it's just another reason to get some exercise most days, if not every day. All right, let's talk about some supplements because this video wouldn't be complete without them. Now, anybody's welcome to argue with me, but the supplements that I think worth taking for immunity are vitamin D, zinc, vitamin C, and NAC or glutathione. And here's why. Vitamin D regulates immune system gene expression. 
there's some debate between kind of the traditional medical system and the integrative medical system. The traditional medical system and all of the guidelines that I am taught to follow say that you don't need to be screening people for vitamin D deficiency, but if you do, a level of 30 is sufficient. They're not at risk for fractures and certain endpoints that data supports. But if you look at cellular data, there's a lot of things that suggest that if you bathe the cell in levels that equate to a vitamin D of 50, this allows transcription factors for immune cells to kick on, basically waking the immune system up better. That's why you'll see a lot of people talking about naturopaths and integrative doctors putting on, on high doses of vitamin C if they've got something like specific diseases, because if they have a really low vitamin D level, you might as well try and get that level up because it's really not gonna harm you if you have a level of 50 in order to see if you can kickstart your immune system to get rid of certain problems. Zinc is critical for cellular development in the immune system, and it's been shown that it can directly interfere with viral replication. If you're sick, load up on it, but you probably don't need it all the time. A lot of people are really into taking zinc all the time. That's just my opinion. Vitamin C. Vitamin C has this way of supporting something called oxidative bursts in the immune system. Oxidative bursts are very short controlled like explosions of reactive oxygen species that immune cells will use to kill off viruses and bacteria and pathogens. Vitamin C supports these bursts and it also kind of limits the collateral damage from the fight. And then there's NAC, which allows your body to produce Produce glutathione, and glutathione is the body's primary intracellular antioxidant. So glutathione helps neutralize excess oxidative stress, and if you want to know the connection, NAC is able to basically provide the cysteine that the body needs to make glutathione, which we don't tend to get enough of. So two different ways to boost up your glutathione. And the fifth really natural thing that you can do to support your immune system is make sure that you have a healthy gut. Basically 70% of the immune system is associated with your gut. And it's because it's a constant interface with the outside world. And so when it's exposed to constant food or food that's inflammatory for you, your immune system ends up getting constantly overworked tired and distracted. I actually made a video all about that last week. And so if you can clear up any gut issues you have, it helps focus your immune system so that it can work harder for you. Moving on, let's talk about immunity and biohacking. If you're into this kind of stuff like I am. Now, some of what I'm about to talk about is not FDA approved nor approved for human use. I highly recommend that you speak with a professional about these before even considering them or buying them or ever putting research chemicals of any sort into your own body. Let's talk about thymosin alpha-1. Thymosin alpha-1 is a peptide. It's known for its research that suggests that it can restore immune coordination. Thymosin alpha-1 is perhaps the most well-researched thymic peptide that we have. It's not an immune system booster. It's more like a biological thermostat for the immune system. So unlike drugs that turn up or turn down your immunity, which we use heavily in autoimmune diseases, Thymosin alpha-1 has been shown in research to help restore immune system coordination. Research suggests that it can enhance the body's ability to recognize and target viruses and even certain cancer cells. And what's truly fascinating about thymosin alpha-1 is its kind of dual action nature. It's been shown to stimulate the immune system during active infection, but also help dampen the immune system during overactive inflammation. And so this makes it a major focus of research for autoimmune conditions where the system is basically misfiring. There's a lot of research and data showing it helping as adjunctive therapy for like hepatitis B and C. And so this is all very exciting. Now again, thymosin alpha-1 is currently considered an investigational compound, at least where I live, not FDA approved for general immune system boosting. And personally, I would not try this without talking to a professional about it because it's potentially so powerful that there's a risk of creating a hyperactive immune system or triggering an autoimmune issue that's kind of latent in the body. All right, now let's talk about BPC-157 and immunity. 
Now, the vast majority of research available on BPC-157 is preclinical or animal data. And I just need to make that clear while I'm talking on video. BPC-157 is a peptide derived from a protein found in human gastric juice called the body protection compound. Its role, we think, based on the research, is the accelerated healing of soft tissues. And what we know is that it can theoretically stimulate the formation of new blood vessels, which brings blood flow and nutrients to certain areas that need it. There's been some really great research investigating whether it has positive effects on gut health. And the research is suggesting that it can kind of seal the gut lining or heal it up, which is really promising for certain gastric conditions. There's even some research indicating that it may help repair damage from traumatic brain injuries and balance neurotransmitters like dopamine. And there's a ton of anecdotal from people all over the world using it saying that it heals this or that joint and tendon or muscle problem. Now again, it's not made for human use and compounding pharmacies are restricted from making it because it promotes angiogenesis or the formation of new blood vessels. And there's a theoretical risk that it could accelerate the growth of existing tumors in the body by feeding them with blood vessels. And I love some of the comments that you guys have about experiences with this compound, but I think BPC-157 is pretty popular and even, you know, many orthopedic surgeons are kind of low-key recommending it. Let's talk about some mitochondrial support because we all know how much I love mitochondria. I'm going to focus solely on SS31 for this video because SS31 has a ton of human data on it. It's FDA approved right now for a very specific mitochondrial disease called Barth syndrome. However, in my research, I've seen it do some amazing things. I can't really tell you about this on video, but there's some interesting effects that I think it could have on inflammation. So theoretically, SS31 could have the ability to help a system carry out necessary functions by stabilizing mitochondria or basically allowing for more efficient production of energy from your mitochondria. The immune system can be very, very energy consuming. And if you're not able to fight that fight, if you don't have energy from certain autoimmune conditions. What if there was a way to give you that extra energy by stabilizing your mitochondria and allowing them to run cleaner? And so you can probably see where I'm going with this. Now, again, don't go using this without supervision. I'm just talking about the research here, but I love this peptide. All right, let's talk about the big one, KPV. KPV is a tiny three amino acid fragment of a hormone called alpha MSH, which we make. Everything I am about to say is not supported by human data, but I wanted to touch on this compound because some really anecdotal data exists. Now, according to research, the way that KPV works is by entering the cell nucleus and inhibiting something called NF kappa B. This is the master on switch for inflammation I touched upon it earlier. It's unique because it uses a specific transporter that's highly active in the gut, which makes it a major focus of research for digestive inflammation. There's some pretty strong animal data which showed a reduction in the inflammatory response of animals that had immune mediated gut diseases. There's also some pretty amazing data and anecdotal data that suggests that KPV can reduce swelling and inflammation in the skin. It's also been shown to have an ability to disrupt the cell walls of certain bacteria and things like candida or funguses, fungi. That's just some Petri dish science. Again, it's not approved for human use. All of this is either anecdotal, meaning people are saying this is what happened to me when I took it, or it's animal-based research. It's just pretty interesting. So there you have it. There are my thoughts on things that you can do to boost your immune system resilience and supplements that you can take, as well as some really cool research on different peptides. I'm Dr. Ashley Frazee. I am just a regular doctor who's fascinated by topics like this. If you like this video, please hit like for me and subscribe to my channel and I'll keep doing some research. You guys have the best day.